I'll let you uh, go. I, uh, shall we take knee and change the yeah. kind of tone a little bit? Let's go to knee. Knee, you are uh, live with us on Truth Wanted. Knee from Ohio, what's going on? Not much, uh, Prophet Dan, Reverend uh, Richard. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. I'm into it. I mess with it. Let's go, Dan. Let's go. What you got for us? I've had a near death experience. I'm still an atheist. Cool. Awesome. Um, I, 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 it, was it like, did you like see heaven or something? Did you, did you hang out with Jesus? Like what, I what was your, what you could objectively, subjectively mistake to be heaven because okay. it's a full brain reset. So vision is upside down. So the guy that's at your shoulder, like, Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Is now mm -hmm. disembodied and flipped the other direction, floating in a haze because your eyes are dilated. Sound is unfiltered, so the rumbling through the floor and all the uh, voices and everything. So you could mistake that for the choir of angels, this, that, and the other. Couldn't make out what the guy was saying to me, which was obviously something along the lines of, hey, dude, are you okay? But in that moment, which happens at like the speed of dream as everything's resetting, it was like you were out for like three seconds and then your eyes shot open, snot shot out of your nose and you sat up like the living dead. Okay, that checks out. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, you know, I do find it funny because um, people talk about their, obviously, you know, near-death experiences are, are the most personal kind of experience you can possibly have, right? So it's like, it's hard for me to like say anything one way or another, but like I will say, um, if I'm going to have evidence of God or evidence of heaven or Jesus or whatever, I don't want it to be when my brain is at its least functioning, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just wanted to be fully right. conscious. If it's like broken, I don't, I just, I don't think that's the best way to convey messages, <laughs> you know? Um, but that seems to be how God does it sometimes. I don't know. You're in that uh, altered state and then the people around you help you interpret what happened and you can latch onto it or not, but. Right. Like I that's how we got say, movies like heaven is for real. Uh, starting to come through. Yeah, like starting to come to is what I was describing. Prior to that happening, I had a brief precognitive vision, I'll call it, because I was technically not asleep. Because I do also have precognitive dreams, not necessarily go down that rabbit hole. I don't think that makes things deterministic. However, but yeah, I had a brief vision of standing up, looking around, see if the teacher had come to class yet sitting back down, talking to the girl that I'd been having the conversation with in the next aisle, which is probably the most unbelievable part of the story. But And then okay. all the two stuff happened with the dilated pupils and stuff. And it's like, eh, nope, this was entirely secular. Okay, okay. But you still believe in the precognitive dreams? I can't not. It's like coupled with the deja vu, like I'll have a dream sometimes upwards of like two years in advance of like an exact camera angle, same words, same setting. And then like up to two years later, it'll actually happen. I don't okay. have a useful application for it yet, unfortunately. Maybe I should start checking the lottery numbers or something. As a I feel like that's that happened way. to me. Nee, I feel like I feel like I've had dreams and then like a year or two later be like, oh, I feel like I had this experience in a dream one time. You ever had that, Richard? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've had that quite often. I think, and I think this is this is a much more interesting conversation. Yeah, than I like that. I like the, I like the implication <laughs> that we're all like in Minority Report, and we can just like <laughs> receive things <laughs> with our dreams. That's pretty cool. Right. I, I'm so interested in how you how you know the, these me the, me. I'm interested in how you how you kind of yeah. uh, quantifying that these details from these dreams you've had. Yeah, uh, you have are a the journal? same details that you've uh, you're experiencing two years later. Right? Are you writing these dreams down as you're having them? Some of them, yes, but like it'll be an exact flash. Like one of them was, and they're usually just something mundane because I'm usually sleep deprived in the moment that's being, we'll call it, sent back to the moment that I'm having the dream. But like one time I was driving north on I-15 in California, coming back from like Victorville or Chula Vista Mall to head back to Fort Irwin, California. And 
the dream slash real version of things I was driving. I didn't see who was in my passenger seat or in the back seat, but I was familiar with them and I was running a role playing game while driving and just having them do paper, rock, scissors tests for probably Hunter the Reckoning. That one was one of the ones I was running at the time, but like, no, two years prior, I had dreamt the dream part of it, but I didn't know those two guys at the time. So when I had the dream, I didn't have the names to put, much less the faces to put with it. And I only got to see them out of the peripheral because I was driving anyway. Okay. Well, I, I would say, I would say if you had like a dream journal where you would keep in track of this stuff, I would be uh, more interested. I think that's what Mark Taylor did. You remember Mark Taylor, Richard? You know who that is? I don't that's, know. That's the firefighter prophet. That's the guy that said, they made a movie about him where uh, he said that um, Donald Trump will become president in, in uh, I don't think he explicitly said 2016, but they said that he would just be president one day. Um, and, and he like, after he was president, he like, they made this movie. He was like, I had a dream about this, <laughs> you know? So um, I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of precogs out there that are doing stuff with this. But yeah, yeah if, you can't, if you don't know when and where it's going to happen, it's yeah, it's not super useful. It, huh? it does make it more difficult. And and yeah, I would definitely go down the route of, you know, writing this stuff down. If you seriously believe this stuff to be true, go down the route of writing this stuff down. Personally, uh, you know, and I don't want to sound like I'm insulting you here. I think this is probably just a lot of misremembered things. Uh, you know, memory is notoriously bad. Uh, you know, even, even to the point where people can conjure up child up memories of going on holiday to places that they never actually went. And they can remember in great detail going on holiday. One of the great memory researchers, Dr. Julia Shaw, uh, has recounted her own experience of this. She's, she remembers going on holiday as a child. Uh, and you know the full experience of the holiday. And when she checked it with her parents, it never happened. It it never happened. Human memory yeah. is really, really bad. I've been very fortunate of uh, being in... Uh, uh, recently, I've been talking to uh, Dr. Dean Burnett, who's uh, he's, he's a neuroscientist, and he's, uh, he's also, he did his doctorate on memory research, and I've been uh, discussing things with him for a project I'm doing uh, recently, and some of the stuff that memory is capable of falsely Getting things wrong is is amazing. It's really, really interesting stuff to go down the field of. I would suggest if you genuinely believe this is true, make as detailed report as you can yeah. of these these things that you think are precognition. Pretty, uh, Every tiny detail and yeah. check those details because I, you know, my kind of hunch here is that there's a lot of misremembering of details going off and and kind of positive discrimination when you're at you're having these experiences and you think, wow, that's the that was from my dream and that was from my dream and that was from my yep. dream and you're kind of counting the hits and ignoring the misses. I agree. And knee, it's a lot of work, but think about this. I don't know if you're single. But how great would it be? Okay, you're at a party and you see a girl and you think she's cute. And you're like, hey, girl, check this out. I wrote about you in my dream journal. Check this out. January, <laughs> January 28th, 2018. I said that I'd meet you here. <laughs> you know, hey, maybe it'll help. Or maybe it'd probably freak him out, to be honest. I, I probably would not actually help your chances the more I think about it. But it's a fun party trick, you know? I don't know. I don't know, Neat. We're just saying a lot of things here. What do you think? Neat, nee, you still there? Hello? Hello, Neat. Nee, give you one last chance here. All right. It still says you're on the line with this, Neat. Nee. I don't uh, hear anything from you, but uh, that's okay. I think I think we pretty much had our takes there. You know, I don't know if there was much more to say, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, dreams, uh, the most reliable form of reporting, for sure.